So once in a while, I get comments like this. And today I'm not addressing those haters, but some of you watching may wonder, how does this young guy afford all this? Well, short answer is, I don't afford all this. But even before I came into this hobby, um, you know, doing this review stuff, I owned 60 plus pair of speakers and just unspeakable amount of gear. So how did I do that? Was I just a rich, overprivileged Asian kid? Let's ask someone that I talk to all the time. Yeah, hey, Sean. <laughs> Am I rich? Question? No, just yes or no. Mm, not that I know of, but you're rich in life and in spirit and in youth. That's awfully nice. Thanks, Sean. I swear to God. Okay, let's be real here for a second. I like being called rich. I prefer, like most of you, hopefully, like being rich than poor. Now, not filthy rich. You know, money isn't everything, but you know, that's perfectly fine with me. So I'm not mad at people calling me rich, don't get me wrong, but I think it was a good topic to cover. Now, I worked at a, about a minimum wage job uh, working at a high-end retail store. And after paying rent and paying for my uh, parents, and yes, I paid for my parents, um, you know, paying all the bills, I pay all of that while working about a minimum, minimum wage job. So how, did I spend all that money on audio gear? Where did it come from? Well, naturally, I worked extra jobs. It's not magic. I, at one point, had three jobs. I had a full-time job working at a high-end retail store, and I did that because I was passionate and you know about audio, and I had a chance to hear all these expensive gear that otherwise I would have never experienced. So I don't regret that. Now, I worked as a filmmaker, like a you know, side gig uh, filmmakers for you know, projects and so on. So I did small projects here and there. And I also found ways to make money kind of selling stuff that's refurbished. And what I mean by that is I thankfully worked near a industrial area. So one day I was like kind of after work uh, driving by like the back of a building and this furniture company was throwing out perfectly fine furniture in my eyes. Now they weren't perfect. They were actually like, you know, kind of broken or had, you know, scuffs and stuff like that. So on YouTube, I spent days and nights learning about woodworking and how to refinish uh, the simplest way, the fastest effective way. Cause again, I'm not passionate about woodworking as much. So, and then I refinished these furnitures and sold them on Kijiji, um, you know, and I think that was something good that I did because otherwise these would have just ended up in dumpsters. And they were just literally throwing out in dumpsters, perfect furniture. Now they were happy as a company because they were basically throwing out garbage and I was picking up garbage for them. And I was happy because I was making extra money on the side. I was able to, you know, make anywhere from 300 to $500 uh, per furniture and at one point they started charging me $50 per furniture uh, that I was taking because I was doing it so often so that was good money that I was able to spend all of it on buying audio gear and I did multiple uh, stuff like this like you know um, another one was like a marble company uh, tabletop companies right they would throw out excess marbles so and I know that you know um, audiophile companies sell these, you know, um, audiophile marble platforms, turntable isolation platforms for uh, arm and a leg. So I started selling them for like $100. And like I said, they were giving it to me for free. And even that company started charging me a little bit uh, once I started taking too many. But, you know, again, all garbage that was reused. And when I went to buy audio gear online, I mostly bought used. And when I bought used, something that I recommend you guys doing all the time is doing your due diligence with the research. So one of the research that I did to never lose out was to go on the Canuck Audio and type in whatever model I was looking up. And the great thing about this is that it will show you every past posting of the item you're looking up. 
So you can look at the pricings, the conditions it, it was in when it was sold and all that stuff. So I would kind of come up with an average price of that item and then I will look up and be patient to, and that's key here, patience uh, to find a product that I want for the right price. And usually I would aim for anywhere from, you know, five to 8% um, in good cases, 10% below the market price. And then I would use it, experience it, you know, stuff like that. And when I needed the money, I would flip it. And what flipping is, is basically you buy this, you know, for example, this lens for X amount of dollars. Let's say I bought it for $500. Um, and then I use it, you know, enjoy it and keep it in pristine condition with boxes and all that good stuff um, as pristine as possible. And then I will clean it up and then sell it for $700. Now, some people may hate flippers, but you know, for me, that was the only valid way to kind of uh, earn money and not lose out. For example, I didn't always make money flipping audio gear, right? If I ever did, it was great. If I didn't, it was just fine. The main reason I bought stuff for eight to 10% below market price and kind of uh, went with a patience uh, strategy there was because if I were to ever buy this uh, for market price and list it for market price, I probably wouldn't get market price. My only, you know, I would, pr I would probably get people, you know, wanting discounts and stuff like that. But instead, if I bought this for $500, then I list it for 700, which is the market price. Then now I have some flexibility there if someone ever wanted to come and buy it at a discount, I can give them that discount and still not lose money. And for me, that was extremely important because at the time I was earning every single dollar. That's okay because I'm young and, you know, I was kind of working my way towards hardship, I guess. You know, there's a saying in my culture, in the Korean culture, where you, if you're young, buy hardship, right? Because it kind of promotes you and uh, you you know you grow with hardships. Uh, but point, point aside, um, I was so passionate about audio stuff that really didn't even come across my mind. The only reason I did it was, you know, the goal was to not lose money and experience audio as much as possible as a young audiophile, as a young person who didn't start off with a lot of money. So I came up with strategies where I could experience and have 60 pairs of speakers, uh, you know, comparing, ABing, and having all these experience without spending any of my money. Well, that's great, Jay, but how do you have all the stuff that you have now? These are not vintage, these are not used, you know, most of them. These are brand new products. And you're absolutely right. Well, one of the reasons I started a review channel to begin with was to experience gear without spending my own money. Um, and when I looked at like tech channels, for, like, for example, like Linus Tech or Unbox Therapy or uh, all these other channels, right? I was wondering, there is no possible way these guys are buying all these stuff. There has to be a way to, for them to be receiving these stuff. And in some videos, they'll say, yeah, this you know, company sent this us for evaluation. And that just clicked on my mind. Well, then can't audio companies send me products so that I can experience it because I'm really passionate about this stuff, enjoy it, you know, without spending my own money. And then as a return, I would you know, give my experience, my honest feedback to my viewers. And that's how this channel was really created because I wanted to experience stuff without spending my own money. I'm being very blunt and honest with you guys. And that kind of, you know, went to building a business for me here with, you know, giving my honest feedback and people appreciate my honest feedback for some reason, you guys keep coming back. So I appreciate that very much. But again, all these strategies came together and one goal was for me to experience as a young audiophile who didn't have a lot of money to begin with, to spend on audio gear. So it's kind of ironic and funny to me how some of these comments are saying that my parents are filthy rich buying me all these audio stuff. I wish, I wish man, I wish, but I am not a crazy rich Asian. And that is the absolute truth. And I'm perfectly fine by that. And you know, hopefully one day I do become a crazy rich Asian. Now, maybe not crazy rich, but you know, wealthy enough so that I can provide. Um, but that's pretty much it. And you know, I hope this 
kind of shed you in the, in the right direction in terms of how you can still be an audiophile even if you are not filthy rich. Because I am on the opposite spectrum of filthy rich, uh, especially when I started out. And for those young audiophiles out there, I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of insight. Like, if you want to make money in 2021, whether you agree with me or not, I think that you, as a young person, can go out there and make money. If you really, really wanted to make money for something that you are really passionate about, there are a million ways to do it. And you know, you just have to go out there and learn. And especially in the market today, with a lot of internet resources, you can learn anything. I learned woodworking, filmmaking, um, and stocks now. Um, multiple sources from the internet. Yes, I went to university for neuroscience and my professional background uh, in research and development, but that has nothing to do with what I was able to do for this brand or this channel that I created. So I hope that kind of sheds light onto, you know, what's possible out there for young audiophiles and don't let prices and don't let money stop you in your journey. Remember, it's not always about price. Better products are coming out each month at a lower price and it's the perfect time for you to enjoy your audiophile journey, which I really didn't have back then. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.